All right, welcome back to Four Inside Podcast. I am your host, Mike Obi. Joining me is a familiar face. We had a conversation with him once before. And, you know, just with all the conversations we've had in the gym and what people have been telling me they want, I had to bring this guy on for this conversation today. Welcome back to London, Ogletree. What's going on, man? What's up, man? What's up? Just welcome to be back. Man, I had a good conversation the first time, so I definitely had to come back and kind of see what I can do again on this. All right. Very good. Well, let's get right into the conversation. So where I want to kind of propose it and start it off is just, you know, as of recently, uh, me and you have talked about this in the gym, just this whole dating relationships and marriage, even, you know, us getting older in age and starting to see some of our peers get into it. And um, just our perceptions kind of change and how they've evolved. Um, You know, I know we're talking to my, you know, siblings, my friends, other people, women, especially too, even, um, you know, it seems that, you know, dating relationships has become the hot topic in our culture. So I figured what better way than to bring two two guys like ourselves who I think are open minded and kind of just have this initial conversation to see where it goes. Right, right. Um, Where I want to start off is just both of us have two parent households and both of our parents are still married to this day. And I don't know about for yourself, but for me, I was always in the minority in that aspect. Most of my friends growing up, um, you know, came from single parent households or came from divorce households. So I was able to see that firsthand the effects of it. Uh, my first question is just what has been your perception of what marriage is or what it's supposed to be growing up? Um, for me, that's kind of tricky. You know, it's like a it's like a trick to me. Like, ideally, you want to have a two two person household with a mom and dad mm-hmm. but it also in my opinion it depends on the the relationship how that's going inside the household like for me I did have a two parent household but on the downside of it it was like my family's relationship with my mom and dad wasn't the best so it was like at the same time I asked myself would it have been better if you have a mom and dad uh just a mom or just a dad or a single parent home and it was a good household or would you rather have a two parent household and kind of it'd be dysfunctional? So that's kind of where I lay my uh, eyes on it because I did have a two parent household, but it was like I asked myself, like, dang, I wonder if my parents did get a divorce. Like, would it have been better for me or would it be better for them? Like, so that's kind of how I look at it. So it's tricky for me, but I definitely think you should have a two parent household. No, nah, yeah, and I, and I think your your perspective is going to be a unique one. How I always saw it is. Maybe it's, you know, us being Nigerian or me being Nigerian, I should say. Um, marriage was one of those things that just was kind of seen as just part of life right now. When you're a kid, obviously most most guys, most, you know, young ladies see marriage as this Disney fairy tale, whereas, you know, it's Prince Charming coming and sweeping her off her feet. And, you know, what I'm saying he's supposed to, you know, propose to her, bring the, you know, roll out the silver carpet, you know, pick up the shoe that she falls on the floor with all that, you know, good stuff. And then as you get older, you start to see that marriage is really a matter of work and a matter of obstacles and a matter of, you know, navigating different challenges. Right. And with that, you kind of, you you kind of have to wake yourself up and understanding that yes, you know, love is a part of marriage, but it's not what all, all is cracked up to be. And to, and to make a marriage last, it really takes, you know, sort of being amendable, being adaptable from both the husband and the wife It really has always been my perception. I've been very realistic about it. Um, Where I approach it a little differently is because while I had a two parent household and I had that all my life, with most of my friends coming from single parent households and me seeing people get divorced, me seeing, um, you know, sort of like the single parent household becoming more of the norm. It made me question, like, is that really how it's supposed to be? Or am I the anomaly? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I really, you know, the outlier and really society is not really meant to be monogamous. You know, I've really asked that question to myself, right? Or is that just something that was created and maybe manifested through cultural and societal, you know, norms and, um creations you know so that's where i kind of approach that what do you think about that um i definitely i definitely think it when you come from a situation how you are in and you kind of see everybody and you think that you're an anomaly because everybody was in a single parent household but like to me it's to me i have this persona where it's like everybody comes to me and be like um how was it with your family how was it with 
uh, because of this and this. Because I, like I told you in the first uh, episode that we had and stuff, like everybody and Katie had a great household. Everybody had the, you know, the cars, the mom and dad, the love, kiss and all that. And I didn't really have that. So to me, I was on the outside of it looking in like, well, it's why is my household like this? And why is everybody else's household lovey, holding hands, kissing? Mm. So I kind of had a perception of how love was supposed to be in the first place. So I kind of just looked at those individuals and kind of took side notes from this relationship. I took side notes even from my parents' relationship and kind of just mixed it all into one because I don't think we have the definition of what a marriage should look like or what love should look like it's just we like you said we kind of look on social media or what movies or what everybody says that marriage is supposed to be Hmm. I think you're supposed to make your I think the downfall of that is that uh people think that marriages can't like you're not supposed to fight you're not supposed to do this and I think that's what kind of messes up relationships so I just took a piece of everybody's relationships that I've seen growing up, friends, families, my family, um, whatever, ex uh, girlfriends, families, and kind of just mashed it all into one and kind of made my own for one day when I kind of want to have a family. So it's kind of how I look at it with everything. Yeah, no, and that's a good point. And we'll kind of dive into that a little deeper uh, further on down the episode. But, you know, I think we touched on something, though, which is that Um, It seems that both of us have kind of experienced a lot of divorce and a lot of separation around us, you know, maybe not us directly, but, you know, just in our, you know, in our upbringing, you know, and and you look at today now in 2022, it seems like that's all people see and that's all people think marriage is built for is just, you know, divorce rates are up, marriage rates are down, everybody's, you know, seeming, it seems to be this power play what do you think is going on? Like, wh- why do you think we have the culture now that we have? Why are we in the times that we're in? Cause that's really the problem that I'm, I'm looking to address. I'm not here to, you know, blame anybody. That's not what I want right, these right. conversations to be about. I'm more so what is the problem and how can we get to fixing it? I think one is, I don't think every individual in this society now is comfortable in their own skin one. Mm. So they kind of look at, social media and if somebody posts their marriage like oh like I've had several people tell me like their girlfriends be like she's about to get proposed when are you going to propose to me so I think they try to speed up the process instead of staying in your own lane and kind of figuring out what you guys need to do um two I say communication is key I think a lot of us lack communication um where there's confrontation or there's something that we're lacking in a relationship we should be able to like come to each other and discuss that. Like things can get a little shaky, uh, little voices can raise and all that. But at the end of the day, you kind of compromise and you kind of come to that one common goal because what I've learned is male and women, like we completely think differently, which is okay. Like it's okay for a woman to think that way. It's okay for a male to think that way. But at the end of the day, you got to come to that common ground and have that, okay, I was wrong about this. I was wrong about that and compromise. So I think the two things that we lack in today's generation is communication and kind of seeing where everybody else is doing instead of staying in your own lane. So I think that's the two things that we have to change in order for these relationships to get better. Stop worrying about materialistic things about how this person has jewelry or this person has cars or this person has such and such money. And just kind of work on building that empire. And I think those are the main core things that we forget now in days. So no, that's, that's a good, that's a great breakdown. And I agree with what you said. Um, and from my vantage point, I, I kind of look at it as um the definition of what marriage is supposed to be. I can you kind of alluded to this is All right. really changed, right? Um, you know, and I think the merits of what is built on is kind of you know, I think people have lost kind of what the overall value of it is supposed to be. What, in my opinion, a marriage is supposed to be is a man and a woman deciding to come together and create a lifestyle, create a life for themselves where they can raise a family. The overall, the overall goal is for you to create a family and for you to raise it and build a legacy, in my opinion. And you build that legacy through the foundation that you set with, you know, the marriage agreement that you set upon, you set upon the roles and um, from there, you then decide to have children and then the children get raised based off of you guys' guidance. But it's, it's 
like to, to really build a strong family, it all comes from people understanding their roles, having those roles established upon the onset of the marriage or the partnership, and then everybody really being able to buy into their roles, right? It's the same thing with running a team. It is, it's a unit, right? I know some people don't like, you know, hearing the word role or hearing the word, you know, leader or head or any of those type of things, but you look at the strongest families, people really know what their ex expectations are and they buy into them. They don't try to, oh, well, I think I could do this or I think I could do this or why can't I do this? There's no questioning, right? Everybody's established. Everybody understands what their responsibilities are and then everybody buys into them. What do you think yeah, about that? I think that's, you hit a great point with that about the whole role. Like I had several conversations with so many women and then I have conversations with moms, aunties, older people and the older generation, like women and men, they kind of have that agreement. Like they, everybody has roles. Like it's, it's okay to have roles. It's not like I'm more superior to you. It's just, everybody has a role. So this can, this ship can keep going. But nowadays when you kind of speak like that with a woman or a man, it's like, no, why do I have to have the old fashioned way of cooking, cleaning, or why do I have to be a stay home mama? Why do I have to like do this? Whereas me is like, I, I don't care which way it goes. You can be a stay home mom. I can be a stay home dad. Like I can be the provider. I can be the breadwinner. We both can work, but mm. it is, we can cook 50, 50, or you can cook, or I go pick up the kids while you cooking. It has to just be a compromise where we communicate that. And mm. that's, that's just where we lack tremendously is that communication. Cause it's, we expect each other to all read each other's minds and that would never, <laughs> that's never going to fix nothing. So it just got to fix that communication. No, that's a great point. And, um, you know, I think, I mean, I want to, this is actually a good transition to the next point, you know, what, kind of what you learned from your parents' marriage and what I learned from mine. I can say that I learned the value of roles through my parents' marriage. Like, obviously, it's nothing in life is going to be perfect, right? But, you know, I, I always kind of look at it like, no matter what, my parents were always in lockstep and, you know, they never ever had a moment where you know maybe us the kid didn't understand anything we try to go to one parent to try to get them to take our side it's like no like this is what this is why we do things the way we do things right even if we don't understand it there was always that no you guys have to understand this is how we're gonna function as a family right, right? and it, you know even taking it to some of the sitcoms you, you look at growing up like everybody hates chris was one of those ones <laughs> in terms of a family unit right yeah. they always understood the dad Julius was the head of the house and then Rochelle really kind of ran everything from the day to day she had yeah, the yeah. She, she you know ran everything I, I don't think anybody would think Rochelle was just some disrespected woman no she she was fully empowered to do whatever she wanted and even kind of one of the examples in terms of how I look at a partnership to work is like when the kids would go to Rochelle and ask like mom can I do this they'd be like go ask your father That's and they'll go back to Julius and then Julius would be like well did you ask your mother yeah, and you know what I'm saying? It's that type of thing. That's what, I, in my opinion, when people talk about communication and partnership, that's what it's supposed to look like. Not every time, you know, the husband or the spouse or the wife tries to do something, it's like, well, no, I want to do it this way. Like, no, you just, you, you. But you see, they, if you, I like that analogy, like, that's a great analogy. Like, if you see Rochelle is really, she supports her man. I'm going to mm -hmm. just be real. Like, she supports her like she's like, I don't need this. My man got two jobs or something. Like she, <laughs> she's she's really on his team. And it's like, I think we lack a lot of, and men too, like we don't support each other, our spouses' goals. And like we just be like, well, this is, I'm just dating you. Like to me, I feel like relationships turned into playing house. I think a lot of this stuff is just like play, play, being fake. Instead of really, I hear a lot of people say, I don't like thinking about the future. And that just really bugs me because I'm like, well, how are we supposed to build something if we're not planning on going to the next level or we just staying in place? Me personally, I like to plan things. So I just think I like how you said they go ask your mom. I always tell people like my wife's going to know that I'm the man of the house, but I want my kids to know that my wife is the big dog. Because like, I, if my kids come to me, I'm going to say, go ask your mom. And then if mm -hmm. she says, if she says, yeah, I'm with it. Or if I got to like intervene, like, no, we're not going to do that. Then I, and then we can talk about it inside the room. We're not going to try. I'm not, my plan is not to yell in front of the kids, but of course that might happen. But like, to me, I don't take nothing to be mm -hmm. honest on what my parents done. So it's like, the only thing I take from them is that they live by their vows and didn't give up because they're still together. But mm -hmm. other than that, I just kind of made my own way with it. 
Facts. No, um, I mean, I, I, like, I think the one thing, because for from when I when I interact with women specifically, right. one of the biggest points of contention they have is kind of like you st- you talked about, like, why does the man have to be the head of the house, or why do I have to be feminine, all those things, <laughs> right? So what I did was I went to my mom one day and I was like, mom, like, first off, I asked her, why do you want to work in general? Because a lot of women I know nowadays want to be stay at home moms or they prefer that. Right. So why did you want to work in general? I asked her that. And then I asked her, what do you what do you think about whenever someone says they want a feminine woman? I asked her those two questions mm-hmm. and it was very interesting, her response to me. She said in terms of why she wanted to work, she felt to have two incomes in our home and she had four children, it was gonna always enable a bit of breathing room for us to do more things, for us to buy more stuff, go on more vacations. So it was always gonna be the extra level of breathing room just in case anything happened with my dad. Luckily, he was able to work till he retired, but we never knew what was going to happen, right? So that was that. So again, she she, she said her overall point was it was for the family to make sure that we had, you know, better, lifestyle right that was that then she was like well this feminine word i mean feminine to me seems just nice and seems to not be a headache right like she said no man wants to come home to a stressful environment whenever he goes out to work and no woman wants to do that but you you get usually what you want as a woman by enabling your your man peace and then enabling peace he's willing to do anything you want usually and i was like god damn if i could have just recorded you know what i'm saying because <laughs> that's that, i mean that that's that's from a woman who's yeah. been married for over 30 years you know yeah. kind of giving that gem right it's not like accepting being oppressed by the misogyny of the patriarchy like being a feminine woman i think that's usually how it gets taken yeah. but rather just you know you understand that as a spouse as a wife you're supposed to be the peace to your man and enabling peace you enable peace to the home and you enable peace in the lifestyle and then you're able to get more stuff done. What do you think about that? I was going to ask you a question. Like, so would you, mm-hmm. would you rather have your spouse be more feminine mm-hmm. or kind of have that approach of, I want to stay at home and kind of let you be the breadwinner or kind of have that double jointed um, household of income? Good question um obviously it'll depend on where i'm at financially um that'll usually depend on what kind of spouse you're you're enabled to get and what your spouse can do right i think it's going to depend a lot on what she wants to do as well like i mean again to answer your question i mean obviously i don't mind my spouse working but her working or her having a career this can sound however it wants to sound it can't come at the sacrifice of her respect to me or her femininity i think that's where most women get it get it confused is that you know i hear a lot of oh i have a career i have a job i have a bag yes and you should that's great that's absolutely respectable but where i see there being the problem is that that thinks most women think okay that can come at the sacrifice of my respect for my partner right like i have a bag too therefore i don't have to listen to what you're saying like i'm like okay you're gonna create more problems for yourself down the road right as opposed to if you decide like I'm still his spouse, he still expects me to be a woman. He still expects me to bring him peace. Like no matter how much I work, no matter how much money I have, that's still my expectation as the woman of the house. I think less contention, less issues would emerge. That'd be my answer to your question. And I think that's the elephant in the room. And <laughs> like, yeah, me canceled, bro. God damn. Huh? <laughs> like, society will say like, and I don't agree with it at all. Like, I think women should get paid the same as men. I think women should have the opportunity as men. But it's like a lot, a lot of people will say when you do give these individuals these type of things, it mm-hmm. sometimes over, at least from my opinion, from what I've seen in my situations with um, exes who uh, came out of college and like my ex, she she started off making more than me. And I could kind of see a whole transition Mm-hmm. and how she acted with me mm-hmm. and at the time she was like kind of like putting me down at a point where I was like dang like you wasn't acting like that when we was in college and it took me a while to get off my feet out of college to get a job and start my career mm-hmm. but it's like I still want you to still be that loving 
caring person that you were and you can still be a like feminist and still love me for who I am but I still like to me that's something that I always instill in women like I want y'all to be the bread like I want y'all to be a bread when I want you to learn how to invest I want you to learn how to put your money into other things to make your money grow because without if I'm up here and you're down here mm. I can't have the same mentality as you so I need you to come up there with me and I got to teach you and vice versa if you're up there you should want to lift me up and I feel like women now don't want to lift up their mans if they're below them and I'm like it's okay to lift up your man if he's below you and like that's why I love what your mom said like I thought two incomes could be better than one mm -hmm. and if your dad needed me I was I was there for him and that's the same kind of with my parents like both of my parents were they both have great jobs they both make really good money and if my dad, like my dad went bankrupt in uh, 2008 with mm -hmm. everything, with the recession, everything. And it's like, my mom can pick this up and she can get things going. And it's like, to me, that's attractive. Dude, I can see a woman just be like, oh, my baby can pick something up and we can, we can go to the moon. So it's a, it's a tough situation. It's a tough conversation, but I definitely think that's kind of where I lie on it. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. And, and hey, look, most of what I think about relationships or most of how I see relationships is largely influenced by the example that was set for, for my, like the way I see it is they're still married. They're still trucking along. And I, and I'm at an age now where I can literally go to them and ask them like, why'd you do this? Why'd you do this? Why did this happen this way? Why'd you guys do it this way? And what they say to me makes sense. Then right. like I go to people who maybe have, you know, divorced parents, separated parents, single parent households. And I ask them like, well, okay, what was that like? Or how, yeah. how did this, why did this not work? And then based off of all those influences, I'm able to kind of come to my agreement. So everything I talk about comes from somewhere. I'm not just saying I want her to be this way just because, no, it's because I understand right. there's, there's a reason, there's a method, right? Like for, for me, it seems like above all else, respect has to come first and foremost from two partners. Once the respect is established, love can be had. Once love is there and respect, then everything seems to flow better. But the second one partner starts to think, because I have this, I have higher leverage and therefore I can, I can treat you any type of way I want. That's when you're setting yourself up to fail is my overall point. Exactly. That's a beautiful point. All righty. So you know, transitioning on, you know, especially today, I think ever since the pandemic, these dating relationship, you know, platforms have taken over and really have sort of been a, a large influence in our culture. And we've touched on all, most of the points uh, so far with this conversation today. Um, from what you've seen, what are some of the key takeaways you've been able to take away from dating relationship, you know, talks or just from what you've had in the gym with me or with anybody else? What is kind of your overall perception of what our dating culture is today and um, how people see marriage. <laughs> well, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest with it, the things that I'm seeing and just, if I look from both sides of it, it's like I said, it's like elephant in the room is cheating. So a lot of people um, are looking into relationships and I think everybody now that I've spoken to mm -hmm. is somewhat hurt about something they're still trying to get over their ex they're trying to do a rebound and get over that ex mm. or they're trying to find somebody and trying to figure out how to love somebody again mm. um i think the problem when i had my situation with my ex and we separated i told myself instead of going to hurt another woman mm. let me sit down and figure out instead of blaming her from her flaws let me sit down and figure out what I did wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me put myself out there and say, well, London, you did this. L, you did this. How do you go about it the next way? So another woman doesn't get hurt or another, if a woman's hearing this, like another man doesn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the problem, what I'm seeing and the trends going on is like, everybody wants to just jump to the next guy or next girl just so they can get over their ex. And truly they're not even over them. So it's like, heal first as, as you'll see on like a post or somebody posts on twitter uh, instagram heal first before coming in this relationship because i don't have time to kind of baby you and basically be captain save save somebody but you know say, say what <laughs> captain save her. i'm be real with you so <laughs> it's um that's that's a quote you know but it's uh, <laughs> i don't got time for that so it's like yeah and another thing is you kind of got to see 
we're in a society now where we got to kind of, we're at a level at age where people are transitioning to settle down. So mm -hmm. it's like, we got to see what that person does is for a career. We got to see what type of goals they have in life. So there's a lot of things I'm seeing, but the main thing I'm seeing is people are talking about people who have been cheated on, people are hurt, people are still not recovered from their old first love. So it's like, you got to figure it out before you go to that next love. I think that's what's messing everything up in this dating stuff now. So Yeah, that's a fact. I'll take it one further. I think just we're dealing with the effects of hookup culture as well as uh, social media dating age, right? I think most people enter interactions with men and women uh, one foot in, one foot out rather than getting fully invested or, you know, like sounding fully invested make, makes it seem like, okay, you're just trying to, you know, set a beeline towards marriage. Right. Us as men, usually we, we, we like to let things happen and progress organically because it, it really does take time. This is my opinion. It takes time to really understand if a woman can be marriage material or not. You have to kind of go through some things with her, um, before you think, okay, she wifey material. You start off at girlfriend material, and then you can progress yourself to wifey material. That's my opinion. Um, I know there are those who say, no, God knows, you know, after one or two months, um, whether a woman is marriageable or not. I'm telling, I'm saying it now. That's kind of why we have the problem that we have. What you, what your woman can present to you in two minutes isn't what she's gonna be to you in a year, two years. It takes some time and takes going through things. That's what marriage is going through things and going through obstacles, right? So a guy looks at it and says, okay, we need to go through some things. Like my thing is, if y'all, if you propose before y'all have had a fight or had some type of turmoil, then you don't really know who you're getting in, in a relationship right, right. with. You don't know who you're marrying. You don't know who you're setting right. a family with. What is her family dynamic? Like, does her family like, does her family accept you? Does her culture accept you, right? Or and vice versa for the woman. Does the man's family accept you? Does his mother love you? Um, is, is her, is his parents, you know, accepting of you? Is his culture accepting of you? You have to really deal with those things and acknowledge whether you can um, handle that or not. Because a lot of people try to, Say, oh, you know, we could ignore it. We could sweep that under the rug. And then it becomes an elephant in the room that doesn't go away. Well, now you're married. And gosh forbid y'all have a child or children. And then you got to deal with that. And then, like, my, my I don't want to say fear, but the one thing I don't ever want to have happen is me creating a, uh, or me raising a child in a single parent home. That's the, my overall, like, I don't want that to be the case. Because I've seen what it does, right? And so... Okay. Yeah, with all of this, that's why it's like having these conversations now. I try to avoid them, but it's like, now nah, I really want to learn so I can do this the right way. Yeah, we need these conversations. I got two questions for you, though. All right, Sam. Let's go. How, to answer, you said one or two months is too short. How long do mm -hmm. you think you should be in the talking dating stage before proposing to a woman? Okay. How I see it is you can talk slash date casually whatever you want to yeah. define that as um one to three months after three months to six months you can then depending on the person you can decide whether that's girlfriend status okay right or boyfriend status that's that's my approach as a man and as who i am usually yeah. right because after three months like you kind of get a gauge on whether you get along with the person is it just a physical attraction or not uh, right. does this person align with you intellectually then once you become girlfriend you become exclusive right then you start to see okay how is it on a day-to-day -day basis is, is this person insecure towards me or does she have certain things that i wasn't privy to right so that's six months then six months i would say once you get to two years then we can start talking we can start acknowledging marriage right and then after that, it's just a matter of when the Very time is right. But I say zero to three months, that's dating talking stage. Okay. From three to six months, you can start to, you know, make that okay. conversation towards girlfriend, boyfriend. Okay. Right. And then after, you know, six months to two years, then you start, you know, maybe you start trying yeah. to have that conversation towards Mary's to answer your question. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I kind of if you want to I say one to three months like the talking phase kind of getting to know each other and then but okay um to me it's six months to a year mm -hmm. before i say like we should be girlfriend and boyfriend mm -hmm. just so i can fully because i think what you said that was perfect to me is like if i don't get in a fight with you like i don't know what you like we could just we could just be like 
we don't know how good this can be. Like if something goes bad, like how do I know you won't just fold on me? But mm-hmm. something gets hard. I need to, I, we need to go through some fights. We need to go through some trials and tribulations before we can take that to the next step. And I say two years is perfect for a yeah. marriage, but I've asked several people and they're like a year for marriage, like, like one to two months for a day. I'm like, no. Well, you know, this the way I propose it is I know that every person is different. Some people know after one year, boom, okay, that, that is my wife and that I don't need to really talk about anything else. Some people don't have the patience to wait that long. Right. And, and, and you have to be, you have to be real with yourself. If you're not willing to wait, you know, that, that year, then, you know, right. you might have to look at doing something else, but you know, those are just kind of my like time stamps as far as like, that's usually good enough time. That's usually good enough time. That's usually good enough time to at least open the conversations. That's how I see it. And my second question, mm-hmm. do you think, do you think you should live with your girlfriend before like move in with your girlfriend before marriage or do you wait till marriage to move in i think waiting till marriage to move in with one another honestly is unrealistic um i think in an ideal world we would like to say oh wait till marriage is not a traditional way of seeing it um the fact is we don't live in traditional times we don't live in a traditional world anymore um and you know just just looking at it you really need to see can you live with your partner like if you if you before you even get married are already tired of your partner then i mean you're already, you're already telling yourself what you need to know you know so why why are you tired of living with them why are you already starting to like fight all the time you know what i'm saying it's because you really get to see what that person is on a day-to-day basis that's not the representative in front yeah. of you anymore you know what i mean I think you hit the nail on a coffin with that. Like, honestly, you don't know a person. You could date somebody for two years, but if you move in with that person, you're going to start seeing little things that they do differently. You're like, oh, damn. Like, I didn't I didn't see this. Even, like, in two years, I didn't see you do this. Like, I'm seeing you every day. So if you get tired of that person, like, as soon as, like, maybe a week or two, like, I can't make it a week without just being annoyed with you all the time or – it's like you got to start kind of thinking differently with that. So I, those are my two questions for that. But I mean, yeah. yeah. And and before I get to my last question, I think the overall um, point or the thing that needs to happen is right. just like this is the word accountability, accountability from both men and women. And just so I'm not you know, before the all police come after. No, men and women <laughs> all need to take accountability, at least for those who aren't in healthy relationships yet. Why are you not in healthy relationships? Was it really every other boyfriend or girlfriend's fault? Maybe you got to look in the mirror if everybody's breaking up with you. You know what I mean? Like, like once you can accept, okay, this is where I could have been better as a partner, then, okay, how do I fix that? How do I become the type of partner that uh, the person that I want wants, right? right, right. Um, no, am I in shape? This is the person who I want wants somebody who's in shape. Am I in the gym? Do I have enough money? Um, does my person care for a person with a career? Like you need to really kind of understand what, what type of person do I want to build a life with? And do I fit those criteria? If you don't, then you either work towards getting there or you lower your standards. Right. And and I think with that, and people kind of have more realistic expectations on what they qualify for. I think that'll fix a lot of issues. I agree. I definitely agree. Accountability is hard for people to take. That's why I say I kind of have to take accountability <laughs> to my actions. Cause yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. About nothing. <laughs> accountability is difficult whenever you know everybody's in in, in this sort of uh, group think and everybody's right and the other side is wrong. If you don't think the way I do, then you're just you know right. I'm just gonna dismiss you. You know, it really takes hearing the other side. And this is why these conversations are good and why I don't mind having them. It's like, you really need to understand the other side and hear what they're thinking. You right, know right. what I mean? So, you know, us opening this up, I think is going to really be good for the content going forward. And, um, you know, we'll really be able to do some good with these things, but it all started with today. Um, so my last question is just, we've had this conversation, but overall, is marriage still worth it? That's the theme of the episodes. So that's the final question. Is marriage still worth it in your opinion? Yes or no? I agree. I think, I think marriage is definitely worth it. Like, I mean, coming from somebody like me, a lot of people be like, Oh, he's six, four. He's a, like, he's totally <laughs> cute stuff. But like, I don't know. I think I'm a lover boy at this point in my life. Like, I'm, Oh Lord, not a lover. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I just think that stuff exists. Like I don't want to just like right now I live alone. Like I got my own apartment. 
Mm. Like, I do like being alone, but it's like you would like to come home to your significant other and just kind of basically that's your best friend at a point. Like, let me see which, how her day was. Let me see what she's doing. Let me go laugh with her. If y'all can create that bond. I think y'all relationship and marriage would be golden. So I definitely think marriage still exists and definitely should be a thing because you just got to basically get to a point where you're growing up and you, you kind of get out that mindset of I'm trying to be, trying to be Drake and single or trying to have all these women. Like to me, that's <laughs> to me, it's like, it's cool, but it's like, I don't want to, I'm tired of that life. Like that life gets born managing the whole roster. So it's like, go get you one and settle down. That's, that's a fact. Cool. No, I feel that, man. I mean, I'm, I'm the same way. I think marriage still has its value. Um, Just people got to do it in the right way and for the right reasons find the right partner for themselves but it's it's like charlie wilson said uh shout out to him you know <laughs> being in love is good for your health man you know i think when you you have a little bit more simplicity you have some more efficiency you have that peace of mind of knowing hey i'm going home to my right. partner to my wife to my spouse and you know what i'm saying we have a life we have a family you know what i'm saying it gives you that extra drive that extra motivation and that sense of belonging to something you know what i mean like instead of just being out you know chasing tail you know all your life or just chasing things that really don't have no meaning that aren't going to leave a legacy. Um, but I think people just have to heal and take accountability and then, you know, things will be better for everyone. It's the words of the day. Yes, sir. <laughs> Preach the gospel, but that'll do it for this episode of four insight podcast. Great conversation with my brother, London, man. Great episode. Man, my guy. Man. This is what I like to do with these types of conversations. So we got to do more of these. Most definitely. And we'll bring more content. We got more coming because this is all for the culture, man. But, but you can catch this episode on all your pl- listening platforms as well as YouTube and the Anchor.fm platform. Much love.